endotherms and ectotherms. Okay, so let's start off with a quick definition of what they are. I'm gonna do a nice summary table just to show you the differences. So first of all, I'm gonna start with an endotherm. Endo means like inside. Therm is obviously like thermal, like heat. So endotherms are organisms that control their internal body temperature by homeostasis. So the examples, I mean, mammals, obviously us, uh, warm-blooded is kind of what this basically means, but that's not a scientific term. So we can say mammals. Uh, also birds are warm-blooded or endotherms. Okay, next up, obviously we have ecto, ecto outside. You might want to call them cold-blooded, but not in your exam. So organisms that depend upon external sources of heat. And well, classic cold-blooded, we're thinking reptiles mostly. Okay, so let's put these guys into a table. Let's do endotherms. It's not supposed to be two words. I've just drawn them a bit far apart. And Okay, and I'm gonna put my qualifiers in this table as well. So I'm gonna say they control their body temperature by So endotherms, well, we've already mentioned it, we can say homeostasis as well as one other thing. So examples of that, if your example don't go into much detail, or we've got shivering, you've got sweating, you've got your hair standing up, there's all sorts of mechanisms that we can use to control our body temperature. The other one um, is gonna be the one that applies to ectotherms as well as behavior. So we think of a dog sticking his tongue out when he's hot, this is going to be to increase evaporation, lose sweat by, by losing heat through evaporation. Behavior, maybe the dog's going to go sit in the shade. The other example I'm going to give you is that maybe they're going to go sit in some water, go for a swim. I used to work with a puma in the Bolivian rainforest, walking it through uh, the jungle basically every day for 20 kilometers. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And it was pretty damn hot. And the puma every day at the same point would walk through the river and go for a swim basically and sit down in the same rock pool in the same time every day. And we'd splash some water on him and cool him down. And so what are ectotherms gonna do? Well, they don't have any internal mechanisms. They can only modify their behavior. So with a reptile, maybe they need to warm themselves up so they can bask in the sun. So basking sharks actually get their name for doing this very thing. They come up to the surface and just lay there to warm up in the sunshine, basically. Okay, next up, we can say talk about their rate of metabolism. So endotherms, warm blooded things are going to have a high and constant rate of metabolism. Whereas ectotherms are going to have a, a variable rate of metabolism, and that's going to be dependent upon the exterior temperature on the environment. We can say activity, how active they are. Well, an endotherm can more or less be doing as active as it wants, no matter what the external temperature. Whereas an ectotherm, cold-blooded organism, is gonna rely upon the external temperature. If it's too cold, it's basically just gonna to have to sit still and chill out, quite literally. So they're active when they're warm. We can look at their body temperature. Generally, this is also gonna be high and constant. Whereas the body temperature of an ectotherm is gonna be variable. 
a little graph that I might just put in here. It's going to sort of summarize both of them in one place is let's do our axes in black, I think. Should be enough space in here. Okay, so if this is environmental temperature increasing, and this is body temperature on this axis, we're going to find that something like a mammal is going to have, it's going to be within homeostatic, so it's not going to be perfectly straight line, but it's going to stay relatively constant and relatively high. Whereas if it's if external temperature is cold, then the reptile itself is going to be a bit cold, but as it warms up, then we're going to probably get to like the optimum temperature for enzyme acting human body temperature is about 37 and a half degrees. So this is a nice little summary graph to show you the differences between what's happening with the environment and how that's changing with body temperature on this axis.